Well, 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 well. Derisia. This one hasn't been played in a tourney in a long time. Hello. Right, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with PA, all the green dots are metal sites. You can build metal on them. That's that. And the top here, this little hexagon, that's your metal. The lightning bolt is your energy. If it's in red, that means they've run out and they're stalling, so everything they'll do is slowed down. If the number is blue, it means they are exceeding their storage capacity. So you have your income and expenditure, but then you also have a bit of storage as well. So if you're spending more than your incoming, you start to eat into that storage. When that storage hits zero, then you're in the red and you're essentially stalling your economy. Um, if you are not spending enough and your storage is full, you are essentially floating your economy and wasting it. And we don't want to be doing that, because that's a bad idea. So, in this game, in this pro 1v1 tourney, we've got Darkad in yellow. What's first? One metal extractor coming right up, with some P gens following that. Going into bot second air, and then into a vehicle transition thereafter. Moving over to Titan. Uh, how am I going to do this? Because I don't have. There we go. I'll just do it this way. There we go. What's first into air? No follow up queue, though. Also, I see Ace Oyster says, Oh god, this map. What's wrong with this map, Ace? So looking at the opportunities for expansion, both players will be wanting to get onto their platforms and try to lock those down as best they can. Number of fabers coming out for both players. If we zoom out from them there, we can kind of see the general gist of what they're doing. A few docks rolling around here. Light assault bots. And your odd boom bot as well. This is a sneaky strategy because, uh, well, tactic. Insofar as uh, if there's an expanding fabricator and a boom bot gets a nice snipe, that fabricator is bye bye, slowing your opponent's production capabilities down. Generally, not too much reward from going to these uh, central central platforms there, but there is greater reward for going around the sort of direct line of sight as the crow flies expansions. A bit easier to defend as well. Bit of choke point there, bit of corridors. Equally on this side, perhaps even more valuable than the other. So much metal there in the middle. Six. So that's something that definitely we want to be playing for. Darkad sending a few docks here and there. A little bit of combining scouting with the potential to raid, especially when you've got bots, bot farmers that are not supported with docks defense. So if this docks here from Darkad runs over in this direction, he can pick off this fabricator, which he will do if he's paying attention. Yeah, there we go. Although I think that might have been just an auto attack. Down it goes. Fortunately, the metal extractor did get up, but that means that Titan does how have to react to what's going on. Is Titan out of practice? It looks like it. Getting some bumblebees coming out now, the bombers from Titan. Trying to defend his metal extractors there. Seeing the resources that Titan is just a little bit behind. Darkad there, still continuing his queue, only going with the single air factory for the time being. Possibly into a second here, possibly into T2 vehicles. We're getting into that time in uh, the meta at the moment where you do want to be moving on to T2. We'll have to see what this vehicle fabricator does. There we go. Straight up into Tech 2, so going up a tier. <laughs> Apparently Titan is very out of practice. Okay, well there we go. 
Can't be too out of practice. He's gone for a third air factory, going into T2 air. Aha. Uh -huh. Neglecting ground big time from Titan over here. Needing to do a bit more defense of the realm, so to speak, and relinquishing a large amount of the map to Darkad, although Titan is managing to keep up in the economy game there. He's expanded to most of the proximal metal expansions that he has. Meanwhile, Darkad still missing a few. Looks like Titan has done some good raiding over there. Let's just pick off a few docks. Metal, fa metal extractor there. That T2 getting focused down very, very quickly from Darkad there. Three fabricators. That's going to go up very, very quickly. T2 air factory, however, less so. Just a commander to do that. But here we go from Titan. This looks more like the Titan I know. Bringing out the air force, the air superiority there. Darkhad is going to have to respond to this, either with more air factories or with some ground-based anti-air. And that's what he's doing here with the spinners. Moving those around, keeping them sentry on the outskirts of the base, and using the fabricators to build up the Galata capabilities there. Levelers coming out from the T2 factories now as well. The fabricators assisting those out just to get that nice little early pusher there. Three, four spinners in that group with a couple of skitters. Gives them the vision range and the anti-air range there to the max. And I'm looking at this number of bombers here. Could possibly do with a couple more. More are being built all the time. They need to reroute as soon as possible. Surprised we're not seeing air fabricators from Titan going and building on these polar platforms there. Down goes a fabricator trying to build a proxy base. Not going to get too much. Too much done with that. Chat doesn't necessarily approve of T2 vehicles on this particular map. I don't know. I don't think it's too bad. I don't think it's too bad. Yes, the bots are going to be faster, but the space between the bases isn't massive. Yes, there are two main approaches into the bases, so with the slow movement and the high cost of vehicles, could be a little bit of an investment to actually do an attack, but... I don't know, I feel like once you've got your T2 up and running, or maybe a second factory as well, you're going to have enough output to defend both sides. It's got some T2 air gunships mixing in with this now. Sees the Galata. Ooh, a gunship got sniped. Oh, there's a storm! You don't want to be going over that. Look at all that health right down into the... Uh, the mid yellows are then flying over all the spinners as well. That's decimated that air force and left it very, very weak indeed. That's not good. That is not good news for Titan. He needs to rebuild that. And he's going for T2 bots as well now. I'm not going to complain too much at that. More vehicle factories too. Titan needs a bit more power though. And he's trying to build that with his commander there. Got a few idle fabricators, but there you go. Ah, you see, this is kind of what I mean about sitting these things sentry. They're a bit easy to pick off unless you uh, put them in the defensible locations. But then once the T2 economy gets going, which really is a bit of a boost then uh, there's nothing wrong with building up a second T2. should be noted that while we do have a storm in here, there are gunships floating around, and gunships do outrange storms just a little bit. Just a little bit. Especially if they are controlled well, and Titan is a air aficionado, so to speak. 
But seeing this on the front doorstep isn't going to be great news for him, especially the storm there. The gunships need to focus it down and they're not. Titan, Titan, Titan. That was a mistake that could cost you. Oh dear, you're going to have to reroute all of your ground-based forces into there now. And that was a large amount of air that was just lost in one go. That is going to cost Titan considerably. Not building walls in front of the commander with those fabricators behind either. Going to need to use some uber cannons here. There goes the one. <laughs> Starting to see the uh, the slammers coming out. There's all the walls. The panic walls. Panic walls. <laughs> oh dear, there we go. But with the slammers out and about, they do have to be careful because levelers do trump them in small numbers. There you go. Case in point. Where's the T2 air when you need it? Bring your bombers back, Titan. What are you doing? Gotta get them over to that spinner there. Darkhead now pulling away in the eco game. About th 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 30 metal ahead. And are we up to our second T2 from him yet? No. Still assisting out those levelers and pulling them out at a rate of knots. Titan needs to get his power in order before he gets up another T2 factory. This isn't fantastic play. He's doing some pretty stellar defense, but uh, miss micro here and there. Like this! What? Come on! There's an attack in your base! There we go. Titan, scrub off that rust post-haste. Meanwhile, Darkhand is going to take the opportunity again with five levelers this time. The commander's going to need some more panic walls. Getting focused down there from five levelers. He's not going to be long for this world, and that's the game. GG. GG. Wow. I messed up badly. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Ooh. What am I thinking? I'm thinking that I haven't seen this map played in a long time. This could be interesting. Oh, I remember playing on this one. This one's a bit tricky. This one is very tricky. Polar spawns. As I hope we have all come to expect. That's north. That's south. There we go. <laughs> Cheese is potential on this map. Good luck and have fun. So, in this game, we've got Admiral General in white and Gataxian in blue. Two of the proest of pros in PA. Gataxian in blue. Oh, it's not on the four. Okay, it's on the three by the lava. Oh, that was unexpected. Very unexpected. Bots first for both, as you would expect. Tarxian yet to do the queue, whereas Admiral General, look at this, flying away with this hot build. Look at that. Bloop, 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 bloop. Whereas Katarxian is taking his time. You know what they say about the slow and steady. Now, this map is tricky to play for a number of reasons. One, there are two different approaches to have to defend against. There's these um, metal struts are in the air. So units can go underneath 
Underneath, underneath, underneath them. Really nice design there. Whoever is responsible for that one. I think it might be Alpha, perhaps. Nice design regardless. Very nice. Anyway, I should stop looking at that and back to the game. Fab is expanding in multiple different directions from Gitaxian, as you would expect, and likewise from Emerald General. Much of the early start of this game is going to be pretty much mirror for mirror, I would expect. Going into three air factories from Admiral, and Gitaxian has a bit of an idle commander. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Silly Gitaxian, silly Gitaxian, something needs to be done about that. Too busy queuing up stuff on the expansions. Needs to get his base going. Gitaxian. Gitaxian, you are usually losing valuable time here. While Admiral General is up onto his third factory. That being a second air. There we go. Back into reality. Realising that his commander was snoozing. Giving him a nice slap around the face. Wake up, you dozy mare. Where on earth was Gitaxian looking quick? I've no idea. Oh, Andreas G made the map. Nice. And the pip is pretty. Oh, wow, yes it is. Look at that. <laughs> I definitely intended that. Meanwhile... Emerald General there, up onto his fourth vac factory. Gitaxian not actually that far behind, but still going up into minute four here, minus whatever it was for spawning. We'll start to see T2 in maybe two minutes time. Straight after the vehicle transition there from Gitaxian after only a second air factory. So Emerald General is going to have the air advantage once he's got his third one up. And running. Airfab's coming out as well, so he's going to be expanding into the distance. Some pretty neat. Um, pretty neat chances there. Margitaxian focusing perhaps a little too much on locking down his expansions. And surprisingly, doing so insufficiently. Oh! Trying to keep that Faber alive. Not managing it. The Intelli bombs are just too Intelli. Oh, <laughs> Gitaxian! Oh my word. <laughs> he he was he was not happy. <laughs> oh, don't let your commander sleep. <laughs> That's the moral of the story there. <laughs> well, here we are, Nick versus Potassia. Most people's money on chat is on Nick, but we'll just have to see if Potassia can step up to the plate and surprise us. Nick there with the hot build, giving away. What's first? Air, air, air. Very air heavy from Nick this series. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Going down to Potassia in blue. Bots, triple air bots. Very air heavy from both of these players. And then into vehicles. So that's where we're going to see the T2 come in with the vehicles. That's the plan. I wonder if we'll see drifters. Because there's this nice bit of uh, lava here that drifters could just wander over. There we go. Which says long route for land means lots of air. Indeed. And also, lots of all of this expansion over here. Either have locusts for that or air to raid it. Either which way. Potosia expanding in only two directions at once, going double fabs in a single expansion here. Here comes a bomber from Nick. Will he pick these two off? If so, oh, 
Ooh, Commander gets the nice hit. Ooh. <laughs> Nick, screaming at the wind. No, he says. <laughs> so lucky. Indeed, if your Commander was not where he was, you would have lost both of those fabbers. Nick also expanding in only two directions at once, going double fab on one expansion here. Interesting difference to the last game that we're seeing that, rather than 1-1-1. One, one, one. Going up into four air factories there. Looks like Nick is going T2 air first. Especially with no vehicle transition. It's possible he'll go into T2 bots for the for the locusts and the slammers. But uh, I suspect that once he sees the T2 vehicles from Potassia, that's when he'll realise, okay, I need to do the same. Oh, 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 boom bots, boom bots, boom bots. There's no trees to protect you this time, sir. Down it goes. <laughs> there comes the rest of the air now. Gonna thin out this uh, little raiding force of docks here. Finishes it off completely. Can he get the two fabs this time? Is Nick paying attention? He's not! Ow! Another missed opportunity on those fabs, Potassia and these two fabs. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> oh. There we go. T2 bots from Potassia. That was not what I was expecting to see. And only a single fab as well, so that's a latent T2 bot factory. Rather than a rush up. And Nick yet to start on a T2. <laughs> These fabs are bait, indeed, indeed. Air fabs coming out now from Nick, so we're going to see that T2 air momentarily. I wonder how much he's going to focus it down. Potentially two fabs and a com. Looks like it. Possibly even three fabs and a com. Can Nick afford that? We'll have to wait and see. But Potassi with only a single fab is going to start falling behind there. Yep, three fabs and a com. Nick wants that T2 pronto. Pronto, pronto. And Nick's doing a good job here at making sure that uh, there's no expansion around the back. Just flying his air over. Just keeping an eye on where Potassia's expansion is. Are we going to see the end of the fabs? Ooh, they're alive! They're still alive! Oh my gosh! What is this? <laughs> what are these fads? Oh no, will they die to docks after all that? Are they gonna fall to docks? No way. No, Bomber, save your fads! Save them! No! <laughs> Oh, damn. After all that. <laughs> In come the drifters, meanwhile. Something vaguely sensible. <laughs> Problem is, there's not a huge amount of air support for those drifters. Oh, 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 keep going up. Get that air fab. 
you know you want to. Yeah, and this is the problem with not having air support for the drifters. Down they go. Insta gibbed. Um, T2 bots and some sl little slammers. Locusts, straight over the lava. Yes, please. That is a nice compact base with not a lot of defense in it. Those factories are toast. Absolutely toast. All you need is a, a, a group of about five or so locusts for real damage to be done there. Don't, don't send them in yet, you numpty. What are you doing? Air trades, and the T2 air is now revealed. Potassia realizes, you know, you know, I need some more air, but is he going to get on it? He's only sat on four air factories, whereas Nick is the same plus a T2 air, so he's going to get that advantage either which way. And he's still sending drifters in one by one. What are you doing? Oh dear, and here comes the raid. The idle fab goes down. The mechs go down. Potassia falling behind on the eco now by about 70. 62 if you want to split hairs. Now by 71. Potassia needs T2 air. Or a very good locust run. One or t'other. He can't send the locusts in yet. He's only got two. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. But while the air is preoccupied around the back, the Potassia failed to raid with that air fab earlier on. Nick was able to expand there. Oh, 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 oh. Here come the locusts, sighted and targeted. Run them towards the, uh, the units. Yep, that's a good idea. Locust 101. Send some air, or get some vision or intel of some description before you send them in blind. They have such a small vision range that they're such a waste if you send them in blind unless you know that you've got enough to really soak up a few losses on the way. Why have we got a rally point here? Why? Why? Why there? What is going on? What is this game? <laughs> gobbled. Air gobbled. Does Nick have T2 Eco? No, he doesn't. <laughs> and to be that much in the lead without T2 Eco. Yeah. yeah. Still no T2 air from Potassia. And has decided to go for T2 expansion before securing T2 in his base. And loses the fab for it. Serves you right, mate. Serves you right. Nick dominating this game in the air. Potassia not quite managing to make any form of dent on Nick's expansion or base. <laughs> oh, finish off that radar, why don't you? Finish it off. There we go. That's better. Nick doesn't need bombers when he has uh, gunships. And all he needs is to sit one gunship right here. <laughs> That'll deal with these drifters whose remains are just peppering the lava lake at this point. <laughs> oh.
Come on, Mustachio, get your eco in check. <laughs> You're struggling. Visibly. I wonder if spinners should be hover units. Quite possibly, you know. Or just a T2 hover unit. Maybe storms should be hover. Or would that be too ridiculous for naval? Yeah, no, that would be too ridiculous for naval. Hey, that's an idea. Bring back scampers. Not scampers. Uh, what's the other one? Stingers. That's it. Stingers and make them go be be um, amphibious and overlaverable. Advanced vehicle factory located from Nick, who's transitioning to those. And that's going to seal the deal here, really. Let's have a look in the army tab if the economy tab wasn't damning enough. Factories, 9 to 15. Mobile units, 130 to 60 odd. It's a bit of a grim picture for Potassia. If nothing else, FAM's pick it off. <laughs> Overloverable Marshall twenty eighteen, yep. <laughs> They're still going up there. Come on, Potassia. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. Sort it out. Sort it out. I bite my thumb in your general direction. There's the telly strap. Are we going to have a proxy round the back, or are we just going to pop it up the side where it's safe just to reduce the uh, the movement time? Quite possibly that. Come on, Potassia, you can bring this back. Maybe. 20% chance. Hey, chat says all these bots are rallied into odd places as well. Imagine how many units have been lost because of these rallies. Imagine. Press F to pay respects. Come on, get some anti-air out there. Vehicle factory, spinners, stop the drifters, build the spinners, send them with your, <laughs> with your pots. <gasps> ah! Nasir is trying to play this like a MOBA. Quitch, do you know what a MOBA is? <laughs> I don't quite see how this is like a MOBA. <laughs> I mean, I guess lane 1, lane 2, lane 3, I suppose, if that's what you're getting at. Yeah, I guess. I take that back. Not all MOBAs have three lanes. Some Heroes of the Storm maps have two they're a bit ridiculous, those ones. He's sending in his minion waves. Oh! 
one day the Drifter Rally will succeed yet. But it is not this day as Nick rolls his forces through that teleporter, ready to conquer all. What was that? What was in there? A fabber that was probably killed up. Where, where are you guys going? Hello? <laughs> I think maybe they, they, they left their tea behind or something. I don't know. <laughs> there we go. That's the end of this one. GG. Down he goes. Ding, ding.